Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we're gonna look at the fact that you've just decided QuickBooks is right for you and your business. So what's next? How do you set it up? How do you start out? Let's talk about some top tips from getting started on QuickBooks Online. Hello, my name is Aaron Patrick. I'm a chartered accountant, certified UK trainer with a brand new logo, and also that QuickBooks chat. Now, one of the things we do on this channel is we tell you lovely lot exactly why QuickBooks Online is right for you. And if you, that sounds good to you, why not think about subscribing to the channel so you make sure that you get up to date news on how QuickBooks is works and what it can do for you and your business. But that being said, you may be at a point now where you've decided that QuickBooks is definitely right for you and you've been listening to everything that we've had to say and others as well. And now you're thinking about using QuickBooks. So let's go through some real top tips on how to start out with QuickBooks, what to look out for, and also what's gonna be best for you and your business. Well, tip number one, and probably one of the most important tips out there, is if you have a new business and you are looking for the first time, I would highly recommend getting a separate bank account. Now, the need for it to be a business bank account is a completely different story. That depends on if you're a limited company or a sole trader, that depends on how much transactions are gonna go through. There's a whole raft of differences and needs and musts and making sure that you get that right. But one thing we wanna do and one thing we want to make sure that you get the most out of is making your life easier in terms of running a business. And one of the simplest ways that can be is having that discipline of having a business account and a personal account. Now, again, when I say business account, it doesn't necessarily have to be a business bank account. It could be a separate personal account that you're using. Just be very careful if you're doing that in terms of making sure that you know when to jump into a proper business account as opposed to using a personal one. But either way, just make sure you have a, per, a separate account. And the best way to do that is to either use whatever bank account you use personally and create a second current account through there, or look at one of the challenge accounts. For example, and by, by the way, we can't recommend which bank account to go through at this point, unfortunately, because that isn't something that us accountants can do. That's what only what IFAs can do for you. But what we can tell you is from experience, what's worked for us and what we can say is a pleasant experience in getting forward. And one of those for us will always be Revolut. Revolut's been a really great way of getting bank accounts set up for our clients. Um, there's other options out there. There's Starlin, Metal, all manner of different types of accounts, but Revolut's the one that us and our friends of Boffix have really got the most out of. When you actually join with Revolut through this particular link, and I'll put the link below, then you unlock some special little sweeties for yourself and you get some extra perks from using the bank account. But why is it so important to have that separate bank account? Well, it's that discipline. It's you knowing that when you go and buy something or get something that is for the business, even if you're not 100% sure, and it's one of those where you want your accountant later down the line or you want yourself to look at later or however it's gonna be, then having that discipline to say, well, that's a business expense, let's use my business card and pay for it out of my business funds will just make it so it's so much easier for you to manage. There's nothing worse than having to come to do all your business accounts and having to do your bookkeeping. And the first thing you've got to do is go through all your personal transactions because you've just used the one account. It takes so much time that way. So do yourself a favor, make yourself life easier by having that separate account, that account that you know is for business use and business use only. Once you've got that on, then head over to QuickBooks, go to the banking section, go to link account, and follow the on-screen instructions when you find that account. Once you've connected that bank account, all manner of good things happen. So what happens there is once that's connected, your transactions are start, will start to come through automatically. Meaning that you can then deal with those transactions much more efficiently. QuickBooks will start to learn those transactions. QuickBooks will start to predict those transactions and start looking at things like cash flow for you. And it means you as a business 
are getting more out of the information you put into QuickBooks. You're not just putting the information in there just to make your life easier. You're actually putting the information in there so that you're going to get the most out of it. So first step, make sure you've got a bank account, make sure it's separate if you can, and then with that information, be able to put that, link that account to QuickBooks and start processing the transactions. We've done loads of video on how to process banking transactions, so make sure you can have a look at the channel and understand exactly how to get them processed. Next step though, is to make sure you know how to record your income. Now if you're a business who sends out invoices, well, QuickBooks has you covered because you can send your invoices directly from QuickBooks themselves. All you need to do is you go to your invoice section, create invoice, or use the new button at the top and create invoice from there. And you can create professional looking invoices, really easy, and you can have it deal with the VAT side of things as well. What also makes life easier for you is you have the option to accept card payments, set up direct debit, so that you can make making payments to your invoice really straightforward for you. Once you've saved and send it through QuickBooks, then you even have the ability then to be able to have a look at that information and be able to make sure that the person on the other end has actually seen it and they can reply to it and all manner of stuff. So it really works well for you. It's something I'd highly recommend. Next step is to get used to that dashboard. Every time you log into QuickBooks, you're going to be sent to the dashboard. So in front of me now is dashboard. It's something I would highly recommend people get to grips with and understand because it's a lot of information being sent here. So here I'm being told my cash flow and my predicted cash flow going forward. Really useful for me. Knows that in this case, that by the 23rd of February, it looks like I'm going to be into negative figures. So that's something I want to be looking at. Tasks. It tells us if we've got any information or any errors that I need to worry about here. So it's going to be keeping an eye on things for me and let me know. What it's told me here is that it's tried to send an invoice and that invoice has bounced. It's telling me my profit and loss, my expense, my invoices. It's telling me if there's anything overdue. So I've got a thousand pound of overdue invoices here I might want to look at. But I've got 36,000 pound of invoices that aren't due yet tells me if my, how my sales are doing. And what I really like to do is do the last 12 months. And if I'm worried about my VAT, that's a quick way I can see if I'm getting close to that figure or not. But more importantly than that is on the right hand side is my bank account. So I'm told here that I have four items to review on my NatWest account. My Revolut account has been completed up to date, but I have a small difference I might want to look at. My PayPal, I've got 16 to review. And I should have a zero bank balance, but there's £342.72 in QuickBooks. It's telling me information about things I might want to look at. And then these ones here are definite giveaways. I've only got one to review, but I have £97,000 in my in QuickBooks, and my bank balance is telling me it should be £1,400. So that's clearly something not right there and something I want to be looking at straight away. But we like to make our dashboard work for us. So for example, here we've got 2020. 20 corporation tax due 31st December 2020. I've got 8,300 due in only a few days time. So having that here as an estimate means that I can make sure that I've got enough savings stashed away to be able to pay for that tax bill. Make sure you've got your director's loan or drawings account on here as well. That way you're going to have the ability to have a look at it, make sure it's not overdrawn so you don't have any tax issues. And also means that you can quickly interact with it as well. So if I do have another transaction to put in and I've done it personally, I can click into here and I can just go and add an expense directly from here. Use reports to your advantage. One of the best reports I've found in QuickBooks is this profit and loss by month report just here. And what this one can do is if I do, let's say the last 365 days run report, Shows me my P&L account, so it's looking at my income, less my expenses, but it can highlight to me if there's anything missing. So for example, here I've got direct to salary, but then it stops. So I can have a look then and see, do I need to put that in? Is it something I'm missing? Is it something I should be looking at in more detail? I'm looking at my insurance, everything's been paid, but it jumps up in this particular period. And it gives me that chance to be a bit more analytical about what's going on and hopefully spot any mistakes or errors quicker and sooner just by utilizing the reports available. 
And finally, use all of the extra bits to make your life easier. So remember in the app, in the mobile app, it gives you the opportunity to take a photo of it, scan the receipt in. That's going to speed your time up, so you want to utilise that. Get used to using the mileage app so you can start recording mileage you might have missed going forward. Basically, have a look at all those extra bits that we talk about on this channel and have a look at how that can affect you and your business. And when you start getting used to all that, the next thing is just to go through your chart of accounts and make sure from a chart of accounts point of view that you have everything in place that's going to make your life easier. Remember one of the big rules and one of the big things I say a lot on this channel is when it comes to what category to put something to or what's going to benefit you or where to put certain things. The most important person is going to be yourself. When you're looking at those reports we've just looked at, then you want a category that makes sense to you and makes that work for you. So if you've got something that you need to put into QuickBooks, then don't be afraid to create a brand new category that relates to it. If you've got a marketing cost or if you've got a new form of repairs and renewals and you want to start tracking that, then don't be afraid to create a new chart of account that relates to that exact expense so you can see each and every month that it's going out. It means you're going to be able to budget for it, means that you're going to be able to make sure that it's always been recorded and that there's no issues. And there we have it. Obviously the most important thing is getting that bank account set up. Once you've got that bank account set up, do make sure you look at some of the other videos we've done on the channel about the banking and how to make the most out of it in QuickBooks Online. One of the key things about QuickBooks is just getting all the data into there as much as possible. So the more data you can put into QuickBooks, the better you're going to find it and the more chance you're going to get the most out of QuickBooks Online. If this video has been at all useful for you, then don't forget to use the like and subscribe buttons. And you know, that way you'll make sure that each and every week you get some new information about how QuickBooks can help your business and how you can make the most out of QuickBooks Online. With that, my name has been Aaron Patrick. It's been an absolute pleasure to do this video for you, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. I can get him out of my head I don't care what we do, everything's really new Even if we're staying bad My heart is saying yeah, 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 yeah You know I want him now, 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 now My heart is saying yeah, 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 yeah Hello and thank you for watching that video. What you may not know is this channel that you've watched this video from is part of a wider group. That wider group is called Apple Core Production. And the three channels that we have involved are as follows. Aaron Patrick, the QuickBooks chat. Boffix Tax Tip. Finally, we have Apple Core Live and Geeky. All the links and everything are down below in the description. But it really mean a lot to us if you can go and give a like to the other channels as well.